Okay, welcome back. So, <clears throat> what we're going to do now with this InDesign file is we're going to export it as a PDF, and then we're going to proof it, uh, soft proof it, which is electronic proofing, um, to just get an idea of how the uh, spot colors and the CMYK colors uh, actually look uh, when it actually goes to press. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to get everything set up here, and I'm just going to export uh, these two pages here. So this is page uh, one, two, and three. So I'm going to go to Command E to export. And I'm just going to export to the desktop. I'm going to call this spot color. And I'm going to export as a PDF. Spell that correctly, or a bit more correctly. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to export this guy as PDFX slash dash 1A 2001. This may or may not ditch this, but X, uh, PDFX 1A um, is a preset. And what it does is it actually goes through, and just like it tells you, it's an ISO standard for graphic content exchange. Uh, all it does is just pre-flight everything and make sure all the resolution is correct or, or whatever and it will tell you if it's not, if there's any RGB images, anything like that. Because once you make a PDF and send it to the printers and it's printed, well those mistakes are there forever. So you want to make sure everything is correct right from the get-go. It's not like web design where you can make an update right away. You know, if you spend five grand to get something printed, you want to make sure everything is correct right away. Because um, sometimes the printers won't tell you and they'll just print it anyway. They don't notice sometimes. Anyway, uh, what I'm going to do is export the range here. I'm going to do uh, 2 to 3 because I got a page up above here. And we're going to go ahead. I'm going to export it as spreads just so you can see everything what's going on. And blah, blah, blah. We're going to export this thing. I don't care about overset stuff. That's fine. And it's going to flatten everything. <coughs> which may or may not take some time depending on the image size that you're working with. Talk amongst yourselves. Okay, we're done. Cool. So I'm going to hide this guy. Now there is my PDF. I'm going to open this guy up. You want to learn how to do this stuff over here? Email me. Okay, so there's my PDF. And it's looking pretty rich. The colors are rather saturated on this monitor actually. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to get this guy. I'm going to make this as big as I can. There we go so everyone can see. So this is what we have right now. And everything looks pretty cool. What I'm going to do is go to um, Advanced, Print Production, and Output Preview. Now this gives me a breakdown of all the stuff that's going on. So notice what we have here is we have the process plates and we have the spot plates. So what happens is if I was to turn off the... Uh, the process plates, and I can just turn them all off, what you're going to see are just the inks, the spot inks that I created and also used in Photoshop and in InDesign. So you got some stuff going on right there. Um, so if I was to turn off the spot plates, I can turn off the Pantone 1655, that's the orange, and now you see what we have is just the sky blue apparent and the Pantone, the yellow, the 1235 apparent, and I can turn them all off. And notice when I turn them all off, just when I, there's one plate visible, um, it goes black. Well, that's just because that will really, uh, when this goes to the print, there's just one uh, monochromatic uh, image, one color image of, of each plate. So the plates are actually burned, they're, they're etched onto aluminum. These plates are wrapped around a big drum. The drum then rotates around, and at the top of the drum, there's this little thing that actually feeds ink onto the drum. And at the bottom of the drum, simply put your paper runs underneath so this drum with this etched image on it rotates through literally kisses the paper and transfers the ink from the drum to the page now you can't print all the colors at once on one drum so what they do is they have to one drum two drums three drums four drums up to six drums actually um, and each drum has a different ink applied to it this is where you get the four color uh, process called You've got cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Those are the four colors. These colors are provided, and they make up one image. There you go. There's a CMYK. And then there's the spots on top of it. So notice how when you make spot colors, and you output them as spot colors, and you don't turn them into process colors, they're extra plates, meaning that when you go to the printers, um, the printer is going to print the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black plus the Pantone 1665, the sky blue, and Pantone 
uh, one, two, three, five. Sorry, that's one, six, five, five. Anyway, the Pantone orange, the Pantone yellow, and sky blue, um, which incurs more cost. So ideally, you want to know this stuff before you send anything out. So if you want to do just a four color job, you can use spot colors. You can just turn them into s process at, at the end of the day when you're all done. Um, and that will avoid confusion and massive costs uh, at your end when you're done. Anyway, that's a brief example of soft proofing. And this is really just really what it is. You can go in and you can break down and see how things separate out, see how things behave, etc., etc. Back in the day when I worked in a film house in Toronto, what we would do is, before PDFs were in their heyday, we would actually take the file from the graphic designers on big old SciQuest massive drives, stick them in the machine, and we would print separations to, and this is what these are called, these cyan separation, magenta, yellow, and black, and the Pantones are all separations. We would print these guys to um, just a laser printer, and each one would print off, um, <laughs> for example, a different image version of black and white. So this would be the sky blue plate on my separation and this is what I would look at and then I would look at the Pantone 1, 2, 3 separation and make sure everything lined up there and then I would look at the process yellow separation just in black and white just to make sure everything showed up exactly as it should. Um, so anyway there's me ranting about processing separations and soft proofing inside Adobe Acrobat. Um, hope you learned something and come back for more. Thanks guys.